Good morning, scientists, junior scientists, and everybody else who's tuning into Virtual Mosey today. Welcome. My name is Charlie. I'm a uh, part-time instructor as well as an amateur astronomer here at the Museum of Science and Industry. Today we have a wonderful topic, a very seasonal topic. In fact, it's how we get seasons. But we're not only going to talk about the seasons here we experience on Earth, but also throughout the solar system. So it's a pretty big topic. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, first thing, of course, is we do have different seasons on planet Earth. Basically, what a season is is simply a division of the year marked by changes in weather, ecology, and the amount of daylight that you get wherever you happen to live. This results in the seasons we all know. Spring, summer, fall, winter. Now in the spring, especially going into the summer, you know you're going to have longer, warmer days. You know you're going to have a lot of things growing because there's a lot more sunlight happening. As that sunlight starts to get less and less, then we go into a fall time. In other places of the world, the leaves change, not so much here in Florida. Florida, we're not known for our wintry weather either. Uh, we're not going to get a lot of snow, and thank heaven, in Florida. But other places do. In the middle of the winter, you're having your very shortest days. You're having not a lot of daylight, not a lot of warmth, and that's why all the snow and wintry weather gets to do its thing. So how does that happen? Why does it occur here on planet Earth that we have seasons at all? Well, we're going to explore that idea with the globe that we have right here. Now this globe, um, and by the way, you can do something like this at home. If you don't have a globe, you can always just use a ball, maybe mark it with an uh, equator, which is the band around the center of the globe. Uh, may, of course, up here at the upper part of the globe in the northern hemisphere, we see the United States of America, uh, where we happen to be here in Mosey. Now, if the Earth were simply upright as it goes around the solar system, we would not have seasons. And that's because the sun would strike the top and the bottom parts of the globe the same amount over the course of the year. But in fact, our globe is tilted. The Earth is tilted at 23.5 degrees from upright. And if you have a globe at home or from school, you will see that in the way the globe is mounted. It's not mounted straight up and down. Now what this does is it causes parts of the globe to get warmer and cooler as the year goes by. Now that tilt in the globe points at the same direction. That's why the North Pole of the globe points to Polaris, the North Star, throughout the whole year. Right now, the globe is positioned so that the North Pole is pointed towards the sun. So that 23 degree tilt is pointed towards the sun. And that means we up here in the United States are getting our summer. Our days are longer. You can see how the light really strikes the upper part of the globe. Our days are warmer because we're having a lot more and a lot more direct sunshine. But notice what's happening at the bottom of the globe here. It's not getting so much light. In fact, right down here at the pole, the South Pole, they're not getting any light at all. That's because at the bottom of the globe, it's winter right now. And at the top of the globe, it's summer. Whereas the sun never sets in the Arctic Circle during our summer. So they have 24-hour daylight for like three months out of the year. Down in the winter, where they're having it in the southern hemisphere, they're having like three months of darkness. The sun is never going to rise. Now, in six months, the Earth is going to be on the other side of the sun. And that means the north pole of the Earth will be pointed away from the sun. We up here in North America, well, we're going to have not so much light. We're going to have our winter. Folks down in the southern hemisphere, they're the ones getting the direct sunlight. And they're going to be having their summer. So what we're really seeing here is kind of illustrated on this board here. This kind of puts the, what I just went through uh, into one big picture. Right now, we're over here, where the northern hemisphere is experiencing the summer. We're tilted towards the sun. It's what we call the summer solstice, by the way, is happening on Sunday, the 21st. That's when the sun is going to be the absolute highest in the sky it gets, and we're going to have the absolute longest day of the year is going to be Sunday, which happens to be Father's Day. So why not, dads? You get all day to play and more sunshine and warmth. 
Now, as the Earth keeps moving around the sun in about three months, we're going to have autumn. Now, our autumn, our fall for the northern hemisphere, the southern hemisphere is going to be having their spring because the sun is getting ready to get higher for the southern hemisphere. So six months from now, we'll be in winter, the south will be in summer, and then the process repeats itself over and over again. So the seasons, the four seasons that we have here on Earth are something that occur all the time, over and over and over, and they mark the passing of a year as the Earth makes its way all the way around the sun. That is what marks a year. So the seasons are very interesting on Earth, and they affect us a lot, but there are actually seasons throughout the solar system. We have seven other planets in our solar system, plus a bunch of other interesting bodies. I do not have time to visit all of them, but I've got some of the ones that are very interesting to me so that I can show you. So here's the red planet Mars. It says here, the red planet seasons are like Earth, they're just longer and chillier. Now, first of all, what the deal with Mars is, is almost exactly like the Earth, in that Mars also has a tilt in its axis of about almost exactly 23 degrees, very, very similar to what we have here on Earth. So that means Mars experiences the same seasons for the same reasons that we have here on Earth. But there's a difference, you see. Because Mars is further away from the sun, it has a longer way it has to go as it orbits the sun. Now, our year is 365 days, but a year on Mars is 685 Earth days long. So it's not quite two Earth years, but it's just a little less than that. So every, uh, every year on Mars is about twice as long as an Earth year, and that means that the four seasons on Mars are also twice as long as we experience them here on Earth. And there are going to be chillier seasons too, because as I said, Mars is further away from the sun, and that means it does not get the intense sunlight that the Earth does. Whereas the average temperature on Earth, meaning worldwide, year-round, is 59 degrees, the average temperature on Mars is negative 81 degrees. Those are both in Fahrenheit, by the way. Negative 81 is extremely cold. As it happens, though, negative 81 is just uh, around the temperature of carbon dioxide ice, what we call dry ice. Have you noticed anything unusual about the picture here? What really stands out in the picture of Mars? Because it's something we have here on our planet Earth as well. Maybe you noticed the white ice cap. So this is the northern ice cap. There's another one down in the southern part of Mars. And just like Earth, Mars has opposite seasons for its northern hemisphere and its southern hemisphere. When the northern hemisphere of Mars is pointed towards the sun, that summer in the northern part, the bottom part has winter. This, the uh, ice caps that you see here, uh, well, they're actually made of two different kinds of ices. You see, uh, the main part of the ice cap is actually there's a lot of water ice on the poles of Mars. Just like there's a lot of water ice in the poles of the moon and even Mercury, uh, the hottest planet right next to the sun has water ice. Uh, it's in the hidden craters, though. But on Mars, we have big ice caps. Now, that, carbon that water ice is actually overlaid by a layer of carbon dioxide ice, what we call dry ice here on Earth. Now, as you get into the Martian summer, it gets warm enough to be able to melt that dry ice, but dry ice doesn't melt. It sublimates into carbon dioxide gas. Carbon dioxide has no liquid state. So during the northern winter, the ice caps shrink, or the northern summer, rather. The ice caps up north are going to shrink, but they do not actually melt the water ice because Mars never gets warm enough to melt the water ice. So during the summer, what we see is the uh, carbon dioxide ice is going to shrink up top. The winter, meanwhile, the uh, ice cap down in the southern hemisphere will grow because it's there winter. And then when uh, Mars is on the other side of the sun, those things are reversed, just like on the Earth. So you see, Martian life is very, much or very similar to the way seasons work on Earth. 
There's one other thing too, besides Mars being really cold, and that is their atmosphere is very thin. Now, if you stood on the equator of Mars during the Martian summer, the warmest day of the year, your feet would feel wonderful. They'd be a nice 75 degrees Fahrenheit, really nice, but your head at the same time would be freezing cold at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty amazing to go from 75 at your feet to 32 degrees at your head, but that's an example of why Mars has such a thin atmosphere. All right, let's go to another planet. The next one we're going to visit is one of the gas giants. So the uh, four planets on the outside of our solar system, that's Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And by the way, the correct pronunciation is Uranus. Uh, these are very different planets. They aren't rocky planets like the ones inside our solar system, like the Earth. These things are mostly made up of gases and various liquids and solid forms. Uranus is called the sideways planet. You may have noticed the picture looks pretty weird. That picture is actually oriented right. We're seeing two sides of Uranus as it orbits, uh, so that's why the faces look different. Early on in its lifetime, Uranus was struck probably by an Earth-sized planet. This was billions of years ago. And it knocked Uranus over on its side. It has the, uh, the most uh, severely inclined uh, or, or uh, spin to all the other planets. Basically, Uranus looks like a ball rolling around the solar system. Now, the seasons on Uranus are kind of different, as are the days. A day on Uranus is very short, only 17 hours long, but that's very typical of the gas giants. Uh, a year on Uranus, though, is very long. It takes 84 Earth years for Uranus to complete one trip around the sun. So that's what a year is like for Uranus. But this weird sideways tilt means that Uranus has some pretty extreme uh, seasons. Let's say that you lived on the North Pole of Uranus. That means that you would get 21 years of summer. Constant daylight, the sun would never ever set. You also, as the uh, Uranus continues on around the sun, you're going to have 21 years of, so that would be summer, you're gonna have 21 years of April or fall or, uh, or uh, autumn. And that's when you're gonna have the day-night cycle Okay, so every day you're going to rise and fall in 17-hour days. And so that's their, their uh, fall, if you will. As Uranus continues to orbit around the sun, the northern pole is going to be pointed away from the sun, and you're going to have 21 years of dark, never any sunlight cold. That's the winter on Uranus. And then, of course, it goes around to the other side, and you'll start having spring again, where you're having a day-night cycle. So Uranus is kind of like a really extreme example of how cycles can go. If you happen to be on the uh, equator of Uranus, your experience isn't all that much different. Uh, you're still, you uh, are going to have still summer, winter, fall, uh, spring and such. It's just going to still be a, a bit longer in the seasons. So you see Uranus is a very different sort of place. Well, the, <laughs> the solar system is full of different places. Now Venus... That's the number uh, two planet in our solar system. And a lot of folks have called it our sister planet for good reason. Uh, Venus is very much like the Earth in size. Uh, geologically, what makes up Venus's hard stuff uh, is pretty much exactly the same as the Earth. But Venus has very, very different weather. You see, well, first of all, take a look at this picture of Venus. What do you notice that's different about Venus than about the way we usually see Earth as it's displayed in space? Looks like a cue ball, doesn't it? You can't see anything. There are landforms on Venus, but the problem with Venus is it is covered by a super thick, super heavy atmosphere of carbon dioxide gas. That comes from the, all the volcanoes that are all over Venus. So when scientists first looked at Venus through our telescopes, we thought it was exactly like you see here, just a bland, featureless white ball. But as we were able to get to Venus with our spacecraft, we could find there were all these volcanoes. Now, the thing with Venus is, because of that carbon dioxide uh, atmosphere, if you think about the, uh, uh, the talk I did last week, 
I talked about global warming and how carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases trap the Earth's heat on the Earth, on the, on the Earth or the sun's heat on the Earth. Venus is absolutely crazy about this. When I say they have a carbon dioxide atmosphere, it is much heavier than anything we've ever had here on Earth. As a result, all the heat that the sun gives Venus gets trapped on the planet. It warms the surface of the planet. And because of this thick carbon dioxide atmosphere, all that carbon dioxide absorbs that heat and won't let it escape into space. Consequently, if you traveled to Venus, well, you would be experiencing temperatures that were always eight to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. It is never cooler than 800 on Venus. Doesn't matter what time of day it is. Doesn't matter what season it is. So Venus does have a tilt to its axis, but it has nothing to do with seasons because it is always hot all the time because that atmosphere ensures the energy is trapped there. Uh, another fun fact, by the way, the atmosphere is 90 percent or 90 times rather heavier on Venus than it is on Earth. It happens that Venus has very high winds in the upper atmosphere, but very low winds next to the surface, only about five miles an hour. But those five mile an hour winds on the surface of Venus can roll boulders along the surface. The wind is that or the air is that heavy on Venus. So that's pretty wild. So yeah. Our sister planet is hot all the time, never any change. So here's another planet that was very, very different. Well, I said planet. Now, Pluto back in 2006 got demoted. When I was a kid, Pluto was considered the ninth planet in the solar system. But in 2006, it got voted out of the planet club and is now called a dwarf planet or a Kuiper Belt object. Now, Pluto's very, very far away from the sun. So as you can imagine, things are bitterly cold on Pluto. It doesn't matter uh, what time you're talking about. Pluto does not have a particular tilt to its axis, but that doesn't mean Pluto does not experience seasons. It certainly does have seasons. And the main reason that Pluto experiences seasons is because its orbit is highly elliptical. Not even the Earth makes a perfect circle around the sun as it goes in its orbit every year. It's pretty close, but it still isn't a perfect circle. Pluto's circle is very, very squashed like this. So that at times during the Pluto year, Pluto is much closer to the sun than it is at other times. In fact, Pluto's orbit dip, uh, ranges from 30 astronomical units at its closest approach to the sun to 50 astronomical units at its furthest distance from the sun. Now, astronomical units aren't going to mean a lot to you. To an astronomer, what that is, is the distance between the Earth and the sun. And we use that as a measuring stick, certainly when we're talking about planets in our solar system. That's our usual measuring stick. So when we say it's 30 astronomical units out, then you're saying that Pluto is 30 times further away from the sun than we are on planet Earth at its closest. But that really crazy elliptical orbit, you can, and think of it as 30 feet to 50 feet or 30 miles to 50 miles, you get the idea. The concern is that Pluto is almost uh, twice as far away from the sun at some places in its orbit as it is in others. Now, as I said, it's always bitterly cold, but most of Pluto's surface is covered by nitrogen ice. Now, nitrogen exists as an ice at an extremely, extremely cold temperature, like minus 460 some odd degrees Fahrenheit. When Pluto gets to its closest approach to the sun, some of that nitrogen ice sublimates. It goes into a liquid and then to a gas very quickly, and it forms a very heavy nitrogen atmosphere around Pluto. Then as Pluto moves away from the sun and gets further and further in its orbit, uh, that uh, nitrogen gas is going to refreeze on the surface. And that's why most of Pluto is covered by giant nitrogen glaciers. In its history, those things just go up in, in uh, gas and then refreeze on the planet. Now, Pluto has an extremely long orbit. It's 248 Earth years for Pluto to make one trip around the sun. 
So a lot of what we know about Pluto, we're understanding from our observations, even though we haven't had a chance yet to see Pluto go through uh, even one trip around the sun since we've only known about Pluto for about the last hundred years. All right, oh, and by the way, another thing that uh, is in our solar system that has kind of the same sort of weather pattern are comets. As comets are big ice balls, dirty ice balls, they come from way beyond the orbit of Pluto, and as they get close to the sun, the sun's energy melts some of that ice. It calls, it's called outgassing, and that's what forms the classic tail that comets have. Sadly, though, that, that gas is all lost to the, uh, ap to the outer space, so it never gets a chance to refreeze like it does on Pluto. So as you can see, our solar system has a lot of strange weather to it. We're lucky to be on planet Earth because it's just right for us humans. Now I have a brain teaser, and this is something I want you guys thinking about until the next time we get together, which is tomorrow. How is February 29 different from all other dates? Well, talk it over with your parents, see if you can come up with an answer, and I'll be very glad to answer this question uh, when we come together tomorrow. Tomorrow, we are going to have a great topic because we're going to talk about how you get from the seasons as shown in space to how we've created calendars to try and make sense of the seasons and the passage of time uh, here on planet Earth. So that's what tomorrow is all about, is about seasons uh, and the so summer solstice and how we created our calendar. Now, I don't know if we have any questions. Do we have some? Okay, very good. Well, it's been great to talk to you guys. I hope you all learned something. I hope you get out there and enjoy. Like I said, play around with some light and a ball at home, and you too can see how seasons happen on planet Earth. Have a great day today, and keep discovering, folks.